What's going on y'all? Welcome to this week's Quick Tip Tuesday and this week I'm going to be going over what I would consider to be my top three go-to flounder lures. I'm going to be doing these in the pool and then while that footage is playing I'm going to talk about why these lures continue to work for me and then when I like to use these lures. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first lure that we got here is the Egret Voodoo Shrimp and by far this is the most flounder producing lure that i have in my arsenal i mean it is an absolute awesome lure uh, and if i need a lure that's going to catch a flounder in a pinch this is it with this lure it allows me to fish in areas uh, like rocks pilings oysters things of that nature without having to worry about all the bait fish such as pinfish and croaker that come along with those you know territories if i were to use something like a gulp in this area it would get shredded by croakers and this egret voodoo shrimp is just very durable um, it has an awesome action it's meant to be fished on the bottom so you can fish it very 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 slow you put procure on it give it a little bit of scent once again put the procure on it you're going to get bit by croakers and pinfish but you don't have to worry about those fish tearing up your lure because it's extremely durable. So let's talk about one thing, one feature on this lure that really makes it invaluable. And, and that is going to be the hook sitting up on top of that lure. So if you notice, this shrimp always lands upright. Uh, and that hook is always facing up. So if you're working it over the top of rocks or oysters, you don't have to worry about that hook getting snagged because it fell over to the side and when you went to jerk it, it snagged a rock or something. Um, so when you're working around these areas and you feel something grab it, you can pretty much set your rod tip down and go ahead and get ready to set the hook because it's probably a flounder. Um, so you, you really take away all your snags and I mean, it, it's just, it's an awesome lure. Um, and, and works really well for me. All right, the next lure that we have here is the egret wedgetail mullet. The egret wedgetail mullet, anybody that knows me knows that I fish this lure a lot um, and it works very well for catching flounder. More so when a lot of the erratic stuff is not working and you just want something that's subtle and tight um, because that vibration pattern on that egret wedgetail mullet everything's tight you don't get that loose action it kind of puts that lure all over the place it's a very very subtle nice tight lure and i mean this lure will definitely grab a reaction bite but uh, it, it's very versatile in the way you can work it as far as just reeling it over the you know just above the bottom of the surface uh, jerk jerk pausing it you know lifting it up letting it fall back down but it's very very versatile and uh, like I said this lure is responsible for landing me my PB flounder um, which I'm gonna go ahead and post it right here uh, just over 26 inches with an open mouth it probably would have went 25 and 3 quarters 26 inches something like that but very big flounder and I caught it on a glow chartreuse 3 inch uh, wedgetail mullet the third lure, um, I really paired two lures up here, uh, and both of them are gulps. So you, you can't you can't go flounder fishing without gulp in your arsenal. You have to have it. Um, but a lot of people steer towards the swimming mullet gulp, and, and that works great. Um, but in my opinion, even better than that is the five-inch Berkeley gulp jerk shad. Um, and, and that lure just, I mean, it glides through the water, it darts, it's very erratic. And if there's a flounder in the area, there's a chance he's going to strike at it. But uh, as you can see here, it's just darting around, very erratic, awesome lure. Uh, and then next up is the gulp swimming mullet. And, you know, it's, it's pretty plain, but I mean, it's very effective at just scooting it across the bottom, slowly reeling it across the bottom or um, jerk jerk pause or just steadily jerking it all the way back to the uh to the kayak or boat but so those lures so berkeley gulp the reason it makes it good is also the reason it makes it bad 
obviously it's good because of the scent inside that lure if it comes anywhere near flounder and he strikes at it he's going to hold on to it you know and, and not let go so you're going to get a lot of a flounder to stick when you hook them however the same reason that makes it good like i said makes it bad um that scent just attracts so many croaker and pinfish and if you're fishing areas like docks rocks and oysters that hold a lot of bait fish you could lose a lot of baits running it really fast and there's nothing more aggravating than throwing out there trying to catch a flounder and just getting tore up by pinfish uh the whole way back so you know that lure is not really good fishing around those areas now the gulp definitely has a place and i like to use them around grass lines or mud points sand points uh cuts and guts and things like that but i stay away from from hard structure just because of all the bait fish all right so that is my top three lures for catching flounder i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see future content. We're putting out content every Tuesday. Um, and then we're also putting out fishing videos as well. Uh, make sure you comment. Uh, comment with you know maybe something you liked or didn't like. Or maybe something you want to see in the future. And we'll put something together for y'all. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.